everything comes back to money. OpenAI does things that benefits itself, and it has to, to a certain degree. But this latest thing, where it's trying to get DeepSeek banned, really irritates me. And honestly, I try to avoid this stuff, and I just let things play out. But this particular thing has really bugged me. So in my last video, I basically proposed that AI prices are going to increase. These companies are not profitable. They're losing money. But DeepSeek is an anomaly in this. They are profitable, supposedly. They are a very lean team. They are training at a fraction of the price. Supposedly, their inference, they're actually profitable on that as well. But OpenAI isn't. So these comments actually stuck with me. So laying in bed last night as I was kind of reading through these comments, I really kind of took them to heart because honestly, everything comes back to money. And I don't think they're wrong about this. So it was about a year ago when I first started realizing that OpenAI is playing a game that's not fair for anyone but the incumbents. Let's jump over to something he said to Congress about that time. GPT-4 is more likely to respond helpfully and truthfully and refuse harmful requests than any other widely deployed model. But think about that. What he's trying to say is OpenAI is the safest model. He's basically trying to scare Congress into regulation here. But that's not it. Watch Similar what he does. Capability. However, we think that regulatory intervention by governments will be critical to mitigate the risks of increasingly powerful models. He is asking for regulation. When I first saw this, I knew what he was doing. They were already winning at this point. There were really weren't any major competitors when this was happening. And as this went on, I realized like he's, he is trying to own the regulation so that they can stay in the lead. Because the more expensive it is for new companies to come in, the better chance that they have of staying in the lead. For example, the U.S. government might consider a combination of licensing and testing requirements. Licensing and testing requirements. This is the dumbest thing ever. If we want to move fast, we can't make it harder for new companies to come in. For development and release of AI models above a threshold of capabilities. And then above a threshold of capabilities, who defines that? What makes this threshold of capabilities? I think Sam and OpenAI want to define what that is. There are several other areas I mentioned in my written testimony where I believe that companies like ours can partner with governments, including ensuring that the most powerful AI models adhere to a set of safety requirements, facilitating processes to develop and update safety measures, and examining opportunities for global coordination. And as you mentioned, uh, I think it's important that companies have their own responsibility here, no matter what Congress does. So yeah, when I saw that, because I watched that live, I watched that live. I was very disappointed because you, the game he's trying to play here is he's trying to own the regulation and the rules around it so OpenAI can come out on top. And you see that playing out here with DeepSeek. Then you have on March 13th, 2025, OpenAI urging the administration, the Trump administration, to remove guardrails for the industry. So which is it? Is it do I want regulation? Do I want to be able to have these testing requirements or do you want to go fast? And this is so counter to what he's saying about DeepSeek. Just to call in a few more parts of that article, OpenAI expressed its distaste for the current level of regulation in AI calling for the freedom to innovate in the national interest and a voluntary partnership between the federal government and the private sector rather than overly burdensome state laws. But Sam, you are ultimately trying to force American citizens to not have the right to be able to run a model because it was developed by another country. A model that we can host in our own infrastructure. That we can make sure that never reports back to China. The article also goes on that says OpenAI says U.S. needs a copyright strategy that promotes the freedom to learn. And if you think about it, they've just been embroidered with lawsuits around copyrighted data and crawling the web and pulling and training on things they shouldn't have. And then let's talk about this TechCrunch article. OpenAI calls DeepSeek a state-controlled, calls for bans of RC-produced model. 
ERC models are People's Republic of China models. That would mean Quinn. That would mean DeepSeek. That would mean Baidu. That would mean something I'm not even thinking about right now. This is the dumbest thing ever. And I think it all goes back to this. We actually have these companies innovating faster than OpenAI is able to. They're competing at price levels that they just can't here in the United States for some reason. They've come up with new ways to actually do some of the things that actually are costly. It all comes back to money. OpenAI is losing money. DeepSeek is open sourcing more stuff than OpenAI has. They've basically innovated in ways that OpenAI hasn't out in public. They've released a model that is extraordinarily good that people really like. And it's one that we can pull in our own infrastructure and run and ensure that it's not actually calling out to China. You can actually take these models, fine tune them yourself if you want to. OpenAI is not open, but yet they are trying to block the only companies that I believe are actually trying to be open. DeepSeek, if you think about all the companies, we have Quinn and we have DeepSeek, we have Llama, DeepSeek is probably one of the best in terms of being open weight and the usability of it. And they're trying to block it, so people are forced to go through OpenAI. And I try to avoid talking about this, but this really does irritate me. And just to dig into this article, the article states it's unclear whether OpenAI's references to models are meant to refer to the API. And I could get behind that a little bit. Right, we are sending and calling APIs that are deployed in China's infrastructure, and they have data governance rules that are very different than other parts of the world. Fine. But I actually don't think what this is, that's what this is about. They said PRC developed models. And I'll explain that a little bit in this bottom quote. But DeepSeek's open models don't contain mechanisms that would allow the Chinese government to siphon user data. If you were to host DeepSeek R1 on your own infrastructure, how, are, how is it going to report back to China? You can literally firewall it if you want to. You can block it. And then this is a follow-up that OpenAI did. So this is at the bottom of the article a few days later. They say, we are not advocating for restrictions on people using models like DeepSeek. So I was like, okay, maybe I misunderstood that. What we're proposing are changes to U.S. export rules that would allow additional countries to access U.S. compute on the condition that their data centers don't rely on PRC technology that presents security risk. Okay, so you don't care if I'm running it, but we don't want PRC technology or DeepSeek running in a data center? Is that what that's saying? Instead of restricting their access to chips based on the assumption that they will divert technology to the R R PRC, the goal is more compute and more AI for more countries and more people. They need to come out and just clearly say what they mean. I'm still reading this as we do not want any PRC technology in our data centers here in the United States. And it just makes me think it all comes back to money. OpenAI is losing money. If you look at the demand that DeepSeek has had, they have probably siphoned a lot of the traffic that was going to OpenAI over to them. And if DeepSeek R2 comes out or DeepSeek V4 comes out and it's good and not expensive, they're going to be in trouble. And another thing I want to say is, the more regulation we have, the more it will kill startups and newcomers. We do not want a world where OpenAI and maybe one or two others control all of the AI technology. We do not want that. Now, whether you're a fan of China or not, you know, I have my own concerns with China. I worry about that a lot. But if they are releasing something open source that we can test and ensure that isn't reporting back or stealing our data in some way. It is a model I'm running on my own infrastructure. We should not ban that from the United States. We should not penalize people for running it. We should not penalize data centers for hosting it. And we should use this technology that they've opened to us and make our stuff better. And part of me really is disappointed in how this is playing out. Because going back to that interview I showed earlier, I knew they were playing a game. They're trying to unrestrict themselves while restricting competition. And I think the way they see it right now 
is DeepSeek is probably their biggest competition because DeepSeek has two incredible models. They have open source tons of technology and open AI is about as closed as you could possibly be. And maybe the one last note I'd say is, don't forget, Tim Altman is also the founder of WorldCoin. And WorldCoin is that company that has this eye scanner. So it copies the biometrics of your eye and marks you as being a real human. There is definitely multiple things happening here. And I'm not exactly sure how WorldCoin is going to play into all this. I have my theories on it. But I think they're playing a game that is just dangerous for America. I think the one shining hope we have is David Sachs. Whether you're a fan of him or not, I don't think he's a fool. I think he will see what OpenAI is trying to do. And I remember watching him on a podcast back in the past, and he basically was a big fan of what DeepSeek was doing. So I think our one hope is that the AI czar does not actually recommend these things that OpenAI is recommending. I think it's absolutely ridiculous to me. And I really hope that the government shuts this down. And I really hope OpenAI doesn't end up in a place where they can, can push like governmental oversight or banning of things from other countries. People should have a choice to use what they want to use. So uh, on the other side is like, none of these AI companies are treating our data privately. If you look at most of them, they're using our data for training. And the easiest way to see that is to go to Open Router and look at this. By default, model training is turned on so that any input that goes in, they can use your data to train on. And I'm pretty sure, even if I turn this off, there are some LLMs that don't even follow that permission. I don't think you can opt out of all of them. Yeah, and look, you can read it here. Note that until full encryption arrives for LLMs, this cannot be guaranteed. So no matter what data you're feeding into any LLM, it is going to them, whether that's DeepSeek or OpenAI or Anthropic or Quinn. You need to just know that. Yeah, it all comes back to money. I'm incredibly disappointed in what's happening right now. I hope the government ignores OpenAI's request. I hope DeepSea keeps grinding away and proven that they can innovate in ways that OpenAI can't. I'm really hoping OpenAI starts changing their ways a little bit and open sourcing more and more of their technology. I do think XAI with Grok, I love their strategy. Keep a model private until the next model comes out. Like we should be able to have open source versions of open AI models that are a few years old. I would be totally fine with that. You don't need to open source it right away. DeepSeek may end up doing that. And I'm, I am fine with that approach. Keep your competitive advantage until you get to the next iteration. I'd be curious what you guys think. Let me know in the comments below. I'm just disappointed in this whole thing. Until next time, everyone, peace out.